hello guys welcome back to my channel on today's tutorial i will demonstrate how to draft cut and sew this beautiful blouse with a raised neckline detail hi my name is ayo and welcome to 011 clothing tutorials on this channel i upload diy's pattern drafting and sewing tutorials if you haven't subscribed yet kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you! I'll be working with the following items. Tape measure. Rulers and curves. Pins, tracing wheel, paper scissors, ideally a pencil should be used for the pattern drafting but for tutorial purpose I will be making use of this black marker pen. Front and back basic bodies block. basic sleeve pattern so i have half scale basic bodies block which i drafted using the boss that technique the tutorial for this will be above and in the description box below these are the measurements needed shoulder to under bust 13 inches around under bust 34 inches the first alteration that I will do to this pattern is to alter it into a precess that bustier pattern. My shoulder to under bust measurement is 13 inches. So I will go ahead to measure and mark 13 inches from the neck point downwards like this. I will square a line horizontally across like this. And this line is the underbust line. My around underbust measurement is 34 inches. So I will divide this 34 inches by 4 and this gave me 8.5 inches. So on the under bust line, starting from the center, center front, I will go ahead to measure and mark 8.5 inches like this. I will measure what I have left. And this gave me 1.5 inches. I will divide this into two unequal halves, 0.5 and 1 inch. You can also divide it into a two equal halves if you wish. So on this dart leg closer to the center front, I will measure and mark 0.5 inch like this. On the other dart leg, I will measure and mark the remaining 1 inch. I will now connect these two points to the tip of the dart and the tip of the dart is the boss point. I will use a slight curve for this but you can also use a straight edge. I will also connect these two points to the base of the of the waist dart. Like this I will also use a slight curve but you can use a straight edge. From the shoulder tip, I will measure and mark 4 inches downwards on the hammer curve, like this. I 
I'll connect this point to the boss point like this using my ruler. From this point, I come down by 1 inch. You can also come down by 1.5 inch, but I will use 1 inch for mine. I will now connect it to the bust point using my ruler like this. I will extend this point beyond the hammer curve by 1 inch, which is the exact same 1 inch that we came down with. I will now go ahead and redraw the lower part of the ammo curve like this using my French curve. I will get rid of this pointed curve here. I will use my French curve for, for it like this. So now I'm done with the front princess dart. I will now move over to the back. From the shoulder tip, I will measure and mark 4 inches downwards on the ammo curve, like this. I will now connect this point to the base of the back waistline dart, like this, using my French curve. Now I'm done with the princess dart for the back pattern. It is now time to create the drop shoulder sleeve on the front and back, back, back patterns. So I'll be making use of my basic sleeve to create the drop shoulder sleeve. I want the drop shoulder sleeve to end where the princess dart starts from on the ammo curve. So I'll measure it and it should be around 4 inches. So I will measure and mark 4 inches on both sides of the sleeve head like this. I will now connect the two points together with my ruler using a horizontal line. This is the back and this is the front of the sleeve. On the middle line, I will come down by half an inch. And I will now use this as a guide to curve the lower part of the drop shoulder sleeve like this. I will now go ahead and cut out the upper part of the sleeve and this is what all that we need to create the drop shoulder sleeve. So after dividing the sleeve into three core halves, I will go ahead and pin the sleeve to the back and to the front arm holes like this. The back sleeve will be pinned to the back arm hole and the front sleeve will be pinned to the front arm hole. I will raise the shoulder tips by one quarter of an inch for both the back and the front and decide by half an inch 
I will now connect all the points together to give me the drop shoulder sleeve outline. From the base of the front neckline curve, the basic front neckline curve, I will come down by half an inch, by 4 inches like this. I will increase the neck width by 1 inch, like this. I will now connect the two points together, like this with my ruler. I will extend this point beyond the shoulder line like this. I will now measure and mark 3 inches above the shoulder line like this. I will now connect these 3 inch points to the tip of the drop shoulder sleeve. Like this using my ruler. As for the back pattern, I will get rid, first of all, I will get rid of, rid of the back neckline curve like this using broken lines. From this point, I will measure 3 inches upwards. I will square up the line like this. From the ori original shoulder tip, I will square up a dashed line vertically upwards like this. I will now connect the 3 inches raised neckline at the center back to this dashed line. It will be at right angles. I will now connect this point to the tip of the drop shoulder sleeve like this. I will now go ahead to add one inch zip allowance to the center back of the back pattern, like this. What I'll do now is to measure the newly raised shoulder lines for both the back and the front. They have to be equal in length, as these two will be sewn together. So I'll measure the back first and the length is 6.5 inches and the front, I will also measure the front and the front is 7.5 inches. So I will adjust the front shoulder line and make sure that it is exactly 6.5 inches. I will now connect this new point to the 4 inch mark at the center front of the pattern, like this. I will now go ahead to cut out the back pattern pieces first.
this is the front pattern in case you want the cut that is between the neckline and the armor curve of the pattern this is the right time to introduce it so the first thing i will do is to locate the middle of the neckline like this i will now connect the middle of the neckline to the base of the drop shoulder sleeve like this this can be cut out if you wish but i won't use this design detail on mine i will now go ahead to cut out the front pattern pieces I will also close the boss that. Please do not forget to close the boss that. So these are the pattern pieces that I will use to make the sample of the blouse. I will go ahead to cut out these pattern pieces on my fabric. So now I have gone ahead to cut out all the pattern pieces on my fabric. I use half an inch seam allowance all through. Except for the side seams where I use one inch side seam allowance. This is the center front piece. I notch this junction where the drop shoulder sleeve ends. It is important that you notch it so as to avoid confusion while sewing. You can also notch the bust line and the under bust line. And this will serve as balance, balance marks or guidelines when joining the pieces together. I cut one piece on fold on the main exterior fabric and I cut another shorter piece on fold on the same fabric. I already interfaced and padded this piece as you can see. This piece will be the lining piece. I will advise that you cut all your lining pieces on the exact same exterior fabric of the outfit or a beautiful contrast fabric. As this will be as the upper part of the outfit will be visible on the outside of the outfit when it is worn. This is the center back piece, and also remember to notch the point where the drop shoulder sleeve ends. I cut two pieces on the main exterior fabric and another two pieces on the same fabric, and this shorter piece will be the lining piece. And I've already interfaced the two lining pieces as you can see. This is the side front piece. I cut two pieces on the main fabric and another two shorter pieces on the same fabric. And these two pieces will be the lining. I've already interfaced and padded, and padded the two lining pieces. And I've also knocked the balance points. That is the bust, the bust points and the under bust points. This is the side back piece. I cut two pieces on the main exterior fabric and two shorter pieces on the same fabric. And this will be the lining. I have already interfaced the two lining pieces as you can see. These are the front pieces. I will now go ahead and separate the lining pieces from, from the main exterior pieces. So now, on the main exterior fabric, what I will do is to go ahead and pin my two side front pieces to the main center front piece. 
like this right sides will be together after pinning the pieces together i'll take it to my sewing machine and i'll stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance I will do the same thing for the lining pieces. And also for the back pieces as well. For both the main exterior fabric and the lining fabric for the back pieces. So now it has been done. These are the back pieces, both the main fabric and the lining pieces. They have been joined together and have pressed the same allowances open. And these are the front pieces and they have also been joined together. For the main exterior fabric, I will place the front piece on the back pieces on top of on top of the front pieces like this. Right sides will be together. I will paint the shoulders. After pinning, I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for the lining pieces as well. So now the stitching at the shoulder lines have been done as you can see and I've already gone ahead to press the same allowances open. I will now open up the main exterior piece like this with the right side facing up. I will now place the lining piece on top of the main exterior piece like this. Right sides are together. I will now go ahead and paint the necklines together like this. Then I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done. I've joined the lining and the main exterior pieces together at the neckline. After stitching, I notch the same allowances at the neckline. I now understick the same allowances. To the neckline of the lining fabric. It's so now time to close this opening below the drop shoulder sleeve. So I will turn the outfit to the wrong side like this. I will paint the armholes in place. After painting, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. After stitching, I knock the seam allowances all around the ammo, all around the lower part of the drop shoulder sleeve. 
I now understick the same allowances to the to the lining fabric. I will now go ahead to join the side seams together. I will be joining fabric to fabric and lining to lining. I will use one inch seam allowance. I will use one inch side seam allowance for the joining. So now I've joined the side seams together as you can see. And I've pressed the same allowances open. It is now time to fix this invisible zip to the center back of the blouse. So I'll fix this invisible zip with the zipper pull on the lower part of the blouse. So I will flip the blouse to the wrong side like this, making sure that the same lines are the upper part and align together. At the center back, At the upper lining, at the upper part of the lining pieces, lining back pieces, I will measure and mark four inches downwards from the upper seam line. Like this. I will now go ahead to measure and mark the one inch zip allowance at the center back of the lining piece. I will do the same thing. For the main exterior pieces at all, as well at the center part at the center back i will now go ahead to stitch in place on my sewing machine making sure that the upper seam lines of both the lining and the main exterior pieces match up so now i've gone ahead to do the stitching on my sewing machine I did this because I do not want the zip to start from the raised neckline area of the blouse. I will now go ahead to fix my invisible zip with the zipper pull facing downwards. But first, I will measure and mark the one inch zip allowance at the center back of the blouse. And I will use this as a guide to fix the zip to the center back of the blouse. So now I'll go ahead and fix the zip. So now I've gone ahead to fix the zip as you can see. As you can see, the zipper pull is at the base of the blouse. You can now go ahead and fix a peplum to make the blouse longer or you can simply increase the length of the blouse to suit your taste. So that's it guys, we are done. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share this video with your friends who are interested in sewing and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.